Hello, this is another training section and um, our company remains 10. That's Total Empowerment Network and uh, is subsidiary of Growth Mentor International. My name remains Prince Yemi Kasali. On this particular training, we shall be talking on how to become an importer and distributor of overseas products and this goes along with branding that means despite the fact that you will be making sales you'll be importing those products you will be branding them also in your name you'll be creating another trend on its own let's take mobile phones as an example today in nigeria we have infinix who is one of the top in that lynch we have uh, techno then of recent don't you think we've started hearing about gino we started and there was a product then called B. <laughs> I could remember the day I wanted to buy it. They told me it was from Blackberry. <laughs> and you know, I, it's so funny. I, I purchased it and I was telling people around that, no, this is um, this is the latest Android phone from Blackberry. <laughs> well, I, I'm not saying you should go into that, but I, all I'm just saying is people are creating their own products. Not because they have a manufacturing complaint but because they understand this training they have this training ahead of you they can sort for a complaint that manufactures phone tell them to put their name on it and give them their specification order for the products they make the sales in the country which they are this does not goes to mobile phone alone it goes to all things for example talking about electronics Talking about computer, you know, one of the most powerful computer that we use today, that we love most today, that we respect most today is um, Dell. And this man started by this same thing that I'm teaching you today. I am so sure he didn't start with his own manufacturing company. And I don't think he ever had one. I don't think. I'm not so sure about that. But I'm so sure he did not start with a manufacturing company. All he just did was to look for a manufacturing company, tell them what he wants, they supply him in his name, and um, he pulled the market. And before you know it, everybody today wants to use a Dell product. So the same thing you can start with, and this thing it does not have to be expensive. You could just go into underwears and um, put your name on it, and before you know it, everybody uh, start buying, especially when they know it is not from Nigeria or it's not from Africa where you come from. So this is a powerful thing to look into. But in this particular video, we'll be going compressively on how you can do this. Um, before you start, you need to have a product idea. That means you really need to know what you want to sell. And um, you need to really know how to um, brand it in another form. How to repackage your product. You know, for example, we have a lot of phones that have Bluetooth, that have infrared. You know, somebody came along with something called um, Hotspot. And before you know it, every phone started doing Hotspot, Hotspot, everything. What I'm trying to say is, you look at the product that is existing that you think you can market and, you know, add one or two features or look at different two products with different features and try and mend the two on one. For example, if you are talking about mobile phone, maybe you know some futures on uh, BlackBerry and you know some futures on um, Android and you try and match the two together. Tell your manufacturer if they can do it and if they do it, you make yourselves. So that's that. Then you need a perfect supplier. That means somebody that would supply your product. And that is the major reason why we are doing this training today. Then you need to know your targeted market. You really need to know what your market wants. That means your people want. The people you want to sell this product wants. Now, on this particular training, we will be making more emphasis on Alibaba. This is the number one and the biggest suppliers directory. That means this is a website where you can see millions of wholesalers, millions of manufacturers, millions of suppliers. So if you're really looking for what to supply and you have thought about it and you are really looking for who to supply this product, then you think of Alibaba. We have a lot of them, but Alibaba is the number one and Alibaba is our case study on this material today. Uh, Alibaba is the largest 
uh, e-commerce complaint in the world right now it's bigger than amazon and ebay combined that means when you combine amazon and ebay alibaba is bigger than them and alibaba started about 18 or 19 years ago that is 1999 to be precise so alibaba has been there and it has been productive Alibaba has a very simple marketplace, unlike other websites. That means you can easily request for your product on Alibaba. It doesn't take you much. One other thing is searching for products on Alibaba is as simple as just searching for a friend on Facebook. So it's, um, it's something that is very, very easy. Okay, before you go deep into Alibaba, there are some things you need to know. There are some things you need to be careful of. There are some things you need to watch out for. So, number one is trading complaint. You need to watch out for trading complaint. You should avoid trading complaint uh, at least. Try and avoid them. The reason is this. Trading complaint is just a middleman. All they do is they look for the wholesalers and um, they look for you and um, they make sales to you so what does that simply mean it simply means you will not be having the good price for your products that means you will not be having the real price you want for your product so you should avoid trading complaints because their price will be a little bit higher although they will be having varieties of products because they are middlemen so they are to sort for complaints and give you the supply as in give you the supply so they have a lot of they have a lot of products but at the same time their price might be a little bit higher because they also have to get some profit from it and one other thing you need to know is on alibaba factory simply means manufacturer you should at least watch out for the word factory most of the time if you're looking for manufacturers and it's always very advisable to deal with the factories because of the cost so the way to know most factories is just by asking for their license although there are a lot of trading companies that would pretend to be a manufacturer but you just ask for their license and um, let your instinct judge you need to be aware of the following also on alibaba for example the first one we said is middlemen and um, you need to be aware of scammers although alibaba is a platform where they deal with scammers every now and then they try and you know synchronize their website often and often to make sure there are no scammers but at the same time you don't want to be a case study uh, you don't want to be a smoke screen so you have to avoid them as much as you can we'll be talking on how to avoid them on this training so you shouldn't be worried then quality of the product is something you also need to be aware of a lot of companies will um, ship anything to you you know most things on internet there is a trend going on on the internet they will always tell you anything they will always be their price to anything but at the long run when they ship to you <laughs> you'll find it very funny to make <laughs> sales of those products because they will be coming on a very very unreasonable quality and one of those things is this when you are negotiating price try and negotiate a reasonable price also try and make sure you look like a complaint even when you are not a complaint or when you think you are not a complaint try and look like one that means try and make them feel that all you are just ordering now is just to see the products that you are going to be a long time customer so with that they don't want to do something that is bad because they feel you're a long time person but if you make them feel as if you just need these things and that is all they might just do anything let's move ahead steps to a successful order on alibaba number one you find the products to find the product all you just need to do is to go on the home page and um, you type in whatever you want and um, you see a lot of them there then the number two thing is to find a supplier when talking about a supplier i mean the manufacturer so look for some suppliers of those products and start contacting them so you pick on those suppliers you contact the suppliers and um, you check and see if they could brand your products to your specification in your name and request for some sample orders that means it's not as if you're not going to pay but what i mean is few orders so as to assess them so after reviewing the samples then you make a mass order depending on how much you have when i mean mass that does not mean you have to order millions of you know goods you, you could just take um 
100 to 1000 depending on how much you have but make sure you first of all see what you are requesting for now let's take it one after the other using alibaba's platform search for your products all you need to search for when you're searching for a product you need to create an account with alibaba that means you go to the home page you click on sign in or sign up sign in if you're already there if you're already on alibaba then if you are not just sign up you know, it doesn't take you much to sign up so you sign up and you sign in again then you search for a product you search in your keyword for example men jean or ladies jeans something like that just search for whatever you want search for your product you search the keywords and searching could go in two forms you could search for the products that will give you all those products in that range or you could search for the suppliers of the product i think the supplier will be the best thing supplier means you search for people that are you know manufacturing or you know selling those products so you search for the supplier so that you know who to contact immediately i think that would be the best but if you want to search for products also to see the kinds of products that are in existence to know the kind of products you want to buy you could also do that and also at the left hand side on that particular page you could also use a lot of um, categories to search for your product for example you could Check the company at which you want the product to come from. You could check if you are getting your order from a manufacturer or not. So there are a lot of things on the left hand side. You need to check that to see what you could add to streamline your search so as to know who to get the product from. So what to look for on your product page. Number one thing is when you are trying to make your request or you make your um, demand to make your order there are a lot of things you need to check number one is the unit price that means how much does these things cost per and check if there is a um, fob along that means free on board free on board simply means the seller will pay the cost of getting the product to the marine port buyer would only pay for the shipping across the ocean that means for example if you're in lagos you're in nigeria and you're in lagos or anywhere in nigeria that means as a supplier i will be the one to pay the cost of shipping it to the to to the wharf and from there the buyer will now be the one to pay across the sea that means from the country to the country so that makes your costing uh, your cost a little bit cheaper the one other thing you need to look for is moq that is minimum order quantity that means the numbers of goods the company can allow you to order for for example the company can say okay i am selling at two dollars but um you need to order for a thousand pa before i can sell to you or before i can uh, make your order ready you know most of it is branded so they need to design according to your taste so there must be a minimum order before they could go to the factory to produce what you want so there's also something we call minimum order quantity so another thing you need to look at is um trade assurance you need to consider this trade assurance simply means alibaba has a way of checking the money you're paying to that person what i mean is this when the money goes into that person's account when you are paying to the to the supplier and the supplier is having a trade assurance it simply means you can get your money back if there is a problem with the supply what simply happens here is this alibaba has the control over the money that you are sending so when the ship when the shipment comes to you if you assess it and you're not okay with it or if it is not as specified then you can um, contact alibaba then alibaba knows what next to do alibaba would um, send your money back to you i don't know if they would ask you to ship it back or something or 
it is just the supplier that will be punished for it but i know your money is being guaranteed the only reason why you'll be getting your money back is when uh, your specification is detailed that means when you are contacting the supplier you must state everything that you want it is those things that you stated that you have to tell alibaba that okay I stated this thing to have radio and it's not having radio and you can prove it that it is not having radio. That is when you can get your money back. So this is just a system whereby Alibaba makes this complaint safe to deal with. This is just a very powerful system of avoiding scammers. Another thing that makes Alibaba safe is called gold supplier. While clicking on um, the former one, you need to also check and click on suppliers that are gold suppliers. Um, is, gold suppliers is an expensive membership. So nobody would want to um, be a gold supplier and start scamming people because they have to lose the membership. And when they lose the membership oh, for just um, $20 or $30 um, test run, that um that's a bad thing to them it's it's not um it's not balanced you know somebody cannot because of um a, a profit of hundred dollars and lose something they've been keeping for long that's one number two is this when checking about their when checking on gold suppliers make sure you also look on how long they've been a gold supplier you want to see somebody that is above a year that doesn't just got it just to quickly scam people you know they've been on it for a year so at least you are so sure that anything you do with them is guaranteed then you need to check on suppliers assessment this is also something you need to look into this simply means that a third party has checked out the complaint and their factories that means a particular complaint had gone to check and assess the complaint and they are good to go that means they are really producing that kind of goods that they said they are producing so if those three things are there then you need to uh, your worry need to be less and it is not easy to get somebody to uh, to go and um, check and assess your complaint and you know tell you they are okay with it so it's um it's a very good thing any complaint that is having that particular thing, uh, it's a very good one. So you need to um, consider that when choosing a complaint. You also need to check on the payment options. We have a lot of payment options on Alibaba. Upfront TT, that means um, uh, money transfer. It's a very risky one if you're transferring ahead of your product and which they will not even want a situation where you will, uh, they would ship to you and you pay later. But it's not as if they are going to scam you. But what I'm saying is when you've paid ahead, that, that's an issue. But if those companies are the ones that have all those things that we discuss, you might want to test run them to see. Um, another thing you need to look into is uh, Western Union. Western Union is a very risky one. I want you to try as much as possible to avoid Western Union. Uh, PayPal is also a very fair deal. You can take advantage of PayPal. But the most one that I want you to look into is any complaint that deals with trade assurance and try and buy it online. That means buy it on the platform. Don't go and pay them outside the platform pay them on the platform so that means your money is being guaranteed if there is an issue um, so after you've done that all you just need to do is to make um, a quote of quotation it is called RFQ you, you just click just make your quote of um, what do you call it quotation that means you contact them try and tell them the specification of what you want how you want to deal what you want them to have to read what and uh, debate on the price and so on and so forth then you click submit rfq that means submit your quote of quotations make sure you ask some necessary questions you also need to check suppliers profiles for verification of badges that means a notification that this particular complaint is good to go that means is um, has been there and has been active and has been truthful with their deals one of those things you need to look under badges is amv 
this check indicates that the supplier has passed authentication and verification inspection by alibaba and a third party verification service that means both alibaba and a third party has checked this complaint and they see that they are good to go another one you need to check is um on-site check on-site check this verifies that the permission of a supplier based in china have been checked by alibaba to ensure that on-site operation accurately exists that means they've checked that this particular complaint is really producing so alibaba have really gone and did their own assignment on that to see that they really exist um you also need to on on the onset check you need to check for um how long they've done that and so on then another thing you need to check is um um is um assessed supply this check notes that the supplier have been verified by a third party service so any of the three is cool if any of the three is there then there is nothing much for you to worry because for a company to go through that scammers one thing about scammers is this they don't have much time they don't have much time to do much so all they just do is just come there try and um give good price for fake products that are not there and collect your money and fly they don't have time to go on to all these ones that we are talking about so with all those things you're good to go so there is nothing there is nothing difficult in um trying to buy in uh, on alibaba so far you know what to check about the suppliers away from alibaba you can also go online and check complaints of uh, complaints about the suppliers you could search online for comments or complaints about the suppliers um, you could always just type scammers along with the complaint for example um, maybe the complaint is um, you i'm just saying that so you just like scam you or scammers you if you type it online it will bring out where they talk about the complaints um where they talk about you as a scammer so it has a way of checking if the complaint have bad records but please note try and read those records anybody could just come up with anything and say any story about a complaint but try and see how many you received and at the same time use your instinct then also you could also check the website check who's that's a website to check um, to check um, the complaints website to see if they are really genuine if the name of the website is being registered uh, by their name for example when you are registering a website if you really registered it with your own complaints credit card it will show the person that really purchases the website domain or the website hosting and it will really talk about how long the website has been in existence so that's a platform where you can check that you could always use some yellow pages to check your website also if they are genuine or not in china you could always use chinaall.com you could also use all these and uh, th this following yellow pages directory to check your website the one other thing is this if you're in a country you could also check if some of the supplier has a store in your country that means a a, a whole uh, a warehouse in, in your country i mean so check if your supplier is having a warehouse in your country not all will have but some have that is just an advantage and the greatest advantage about this is the shipping cost so the, that means the process of you getting the your shipment will not be difficult they will ship to their warehouse you go there and collect so it will be more easier then one other thing you need to avoid is um you avoid complaints that has normal email addresses that means non-business email addresses most email addresses must go along with the website or the company's name so avoid complaints with gmail address or yahoo address then one other thing that is very important and crucial don't go on alibaba to request for branded products when i mean branded products i mean the ones that has been branded for example you don't start looking for nike on alibaba you don't start looking for gucci on alibaba the reason is this the real complaints has their way of supplying 
So it is not as if when you go there, you might see some companies that want to design it for you, but it is not good. And when there is a problem, you cannot claim that. Alibaba will not even answer to it. It's like a scammer meets a scammer. So <laughs> you are both equal. <laughs> so you don't need to look for branded products on Alibaba because those products can never be get on Alibaba because um, people who are doing that already have their means of distribution so unless if you're going there you'll be getting fake ones and Alibaba does not tolerate you trying to imitate another person's brand so you could just get there and get your brand it's as simple as that now one other thing you need to check about the complaint is the complaint's history check on how how soon they've been selling how, how how soon they've been selling especially for example this year check their records on sales for this year that would make you at least be okay that this particular complaint is still in stock that means they are still in existence they are still uh, active because a lot of people might have gotten all those records years back and might not be in good production again but when you check them if they are still conversant you know they are not the one making those records it is automatically being done by alibaba so if the if they're making sales you see there and that will determine how much you can believe them let's move into another thing communication with your suppliers that means if you're true with every other thing you're okay you're so good that you have every other thing being equal they are safe to deal with then you need to communicate with them number one you need to know that uh, after sorting for your products and supplies communication via email is an is the next thing note the, their response might be from oh google translate we call it google translate that means they might be translating whatever you are saying from google you know most of them are if you are dealing with china they are not english speaking country so that means whatever you are writing will go through a platform where they translate it to english and you need to be careful of your grammar make sure the gra uh, the grammatical errors are being as minimal as possible if possible none make your english simple not uh, avoid long sentences just a very short sentence so that at least the translation can be as good as possible make it simple then alight them number one price can you collect this for this two can you ship to my country three can you provide this particular facility on the product so on so list them so that it is easy to translate and for them to see so those are the things you need to note before starting on the conversation so contact the supplier and fill out the message form um, click the contact supplier button there is always a contact supplier button on the suppliers page and um, you put in a sub uh, a, a topic a subject line is there that means you put in a topic you fill in the body on the body of the message I mean the message body you fill it with the necessary message in this case all you need to do is to look for about 10 20 as much as you can suppliers then you've drafted all the messages so you just send it to them and see who responds first and whose price is the best please note don't give out treasures um, request but at the same time try and beat the price a little bit and um, see who responds first and so on and so forth your instinct will tell you that one of those things you need to negotiate is the minimum order quality that is moq and also the price per unit that means the price per unit like we said how much they sell one so you need to negotiate if they are talking in terms of per unit per one you need to negotiate on how much they could collect last that means the last price they could take for it then also if it is also minimum order quality that means for example if you are ordering for the if their minimum order is 100 then they want you to pay 50 dollars you can also negotiate if they could get 30 40 dollars from you you understand it's always negotiable so please try and negotiate a little then uh, verify if they are fob also then what else 
do your conversion, uh, conversion, your currency conversion, and really see how much something like that works in your country to really see if there's going to be good profit on it and if it is um, necessary for you to do. You can always check on your bank or your exchange agents, your currency exchange agents, or you could check online at www.xe.com slash currency conversion negotiate a price uh, the payment price and method that means you after you've negotiated the price then you negotiate on the method of shipment how the how much it will cost to ship to you then you ask for samples samples does not really mean samples like they were going to send it for uh, to, for free what we are talking about when talking about sample is to beat the moq that means the minimum order quality you can beat it down like if the minimum thing you should order is 100 you want to check for samples you want to really check if the quality is okay and uh, you want to really check how fast the complaint will send it to you and you want to really check if these people are not even going to take your money off so you want to check if you are not dealing with a scammer so you can order for 10 or ask them if you can order for 10 or 20 just to see the quality see how fast the shipment is see if the if your money is not going to just run into a scammer so it is important that you first of all order for samples before ordering the large sum then the production time ask for the production time when contacting them also that means how long will it take will it take them to produce the exact thing you want them to produce you know you will be branding your own goods so how long will it take them to be able to brand your goods right so now you weigh your options after contacting a lot of suppliers so you now weigh your options see which one your spirit moves along with and deal with one now those are the major things to look at when dealing with alibaba we've talked about everything that you need to watch out when sorting for the suppliers to deal with we've talked about how you could contact um the uh, how you could contact a uh, a supplier that means trying to negotiate with a supplier then we've talked about the mode of payment and um now let's show you an example of a message a, a, a message you could send to them and that is just an example of a message a, a, a message that you could send to them while making inquiries while making negotiation after you've done that um i want you to be very very specific in your in your messages in your inquiries this is because when something goes wrong so you can have that proof that solid proof to follow up with alibaba that means you could have a strong complaint to prove and get your money from alibaba if the complaint defaults that is if you follow all those things that you need to follow that we've taught you then one other thing is this you need to act very big on alibaba that means you need to you know behave like a big man <laughs> you understand you need to make yourself look real big present yourself like a complaint not like a person um instead of using i you need to know how to use we in your conversation instead of using my you need to use know how to use our in your conversation so it is important that you look big that makes the company feels that you'll be able to afford more products in the future and the, the everybody wants somebody they, they would always be supplying often and often so you need to look that make the, make yourself make them have that impression that you always be contacting them for consequent supplies that this is just um a a, a stepping stone this is just a a kind of sample order so make them feel that you are going to be with them for long now one other thing is this find out all it needs to get your goods in your country um for example that is one of the major reasons why you need to have a, uh, a a sample order that means when you have a sample order you already know how that product will deliver to you if it's going to land at the wharf if it is something you are going to go and clear at the wharf or if it is something that will come to you directly if you are having a small package you could make it like a gift 
when you make it like a gift then it gets to you easier you understand but when you're making a large quantity that means you know it has to get to your uh, wolf section and uh, for you to make some clearance so you need to know all it takes to clear your goods before you make large quantity so that is one of the reasons why you need to have a sample order um today we've talked about alibaba and um if you really want to go ahead with branding and importation of your goods um, from china or any country in the world uh, especially the european countries then think of alibaba alibaba would solve it all and with this training you have no problem just go ahead and um, make some sample orders um, with that you become a professional at this if you go through this training very well and you go through alibaba very well and study it very well also you have no problem you know making your order and you have no problem making your own branding making your own name across the country you could just start with memory card it's as simple as that you could start with anything as small as possible and i think memory card will even make your package look more smaller so my name remains prince yamika sali and the company remains 10 total empowerment network and i want you to stay to stay with us we have more and more to deliver um if you're looking for a platform to sort for financials to be able to uh, make this thing work perfectly to to finance your um, uh, entrepreneurship uh, business and um, dream then look into our networking section thank you very much my name is Prince Yemi Kasani